Hi, good morning everybody. It's, good morning. Lovely. it's lovely to see you all here today and to welcome you on this Mothering Sunday. Um, we welcome especially anybody who's new here for, for the first time or who hasn't been for a while. Do make yourselves known to us. There aren't many extra notices, apart from the ones on the sheet, but we are looking for more volunteers to help in the office during the weekdays. So if there's anybody who would like to do that, do, get, do talk to me or to Mike after the service and we can tell you about it. The other thing is, it's a, a bumper week for birthdays. There's um, Noah Anne, and um, Martin's grandson. It's his birthday on Monday. We've got Mike's birthday on Wednesday. And then, even more importantly, it's Margaret's 90th birthday on Friday. <laughs> and um, she's very kindly brought us in some chocolates to share at the end of the service. So I think it's time to sing happy, happy birthday. I, I also actually I forgot to ask if there was anybody else's birthday this week. Oh, last week. Last week was yours. Okay. Your grandson's birthday on Tuesday. Well, we wish them all a happy birthday as well. Okay, so now it's time to welcome our minister, Mike. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> So God gives us light, and yet often we stick to darkness. It takes courage to go into the light, a willingness to start again to keep trusting, trusting that one day we will see and finally find peace. So be with us this day, Lord, as we come together to worship you, seek you in stillness and silence, to seek you in the love of family and friends, to seek you in the world around us. So let us come together as we worship you. Amen. Amen. So we're going to sing two songs back to back. Um, which is quite nice. We've not done that for a while. So the first one is the splendor of the king and then give thanks with a grateful heart. Let's stand and sing together. Oh 
Don't sit down yet, we've got another one. But if you feel you need to sit down, feel free to sit down. There's no, pr you don't have to stand up. So let's come together in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we give you thanks for all that you do in our lives and in the world. We give you thanks for your wonderful presence and the signs of spring. We give you thanks for your spirit moving amongst us and supporting us and walking with us day by day. In the very beginning, the first thing you gave us was your light, your heavenly light, even before you made the sun. So in your light we flourish, and we give you thanks for that light. We thank you for being with us and by our side, for even in the darkness you are there. You're there when the beauty of the dawn breaks through. You're there in the heat of the midday sun. You're there when the light fades and the shadows fall. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us at all times and that you're with us no matter where we are in this world. And so we thank you, Lord, for your presence. And as we gather together, we adore you and you help us make sense of our lives. But we pray that when we get it wrong, you'd forgive us when we've said things that hurt, shared things that confuse, hindered and not helped, we pray that you'd be with us because you are there. You forgive, you love, and you care. So Almighty God, hear our prayers, accept our confessions, and through your great love for us, offer us redemption, forgiveness, love, and blessings beyond our deserving. May we know that we are forgiven, that we are loved, and that you are with us every step of the way. And so this day, Lord, we give thanks. We give thanks for all that you have done for us and the fact that you walk in our midst every single day. Amen. Amen. So we pray together the words that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So we're going to sing again that wonderful hymn by Fred Kahn, Put Peace into Each Other's Hands. Let's stand and sing. We've just sung that hymn by Fred Kahn, and now I'm going to read a reflective prayer based on the first two lines of the, of the, prayer, of the hymn. Shall we pray together? Put peace into each other's hands, and like a treasure, hold it. Put peace into each other's hands, Put peace, it requires action, Lord, prayerful action. Not just hoping for something, yearning for something, even praying for something, but actively doing something. And put peace into each other's hands, Lord. But what about my viewpoint, my opinion? Because to put something into someone else's hands means giving it away, not holding on to what is mine, letting go. It might be a bit easier if I knew I would be giving it to those I know and love. But what about the other? those who are different to me, those I don't agree with, those I'm not sure I can trust. My thoughts, viewpoint, hopes, prayers given away. And as I stand momentarily empty-handed, how do I feel? There is a vulnerability in giving offering peace? Will it be rebuffed, mocked, or accepted, welcomed? 
Put peace into each other's hands, and like a treasure, hold it. Like a treasure, hold it. A reminder, Lord, that this is something precious, the gift of peace we give each other. Having given, can I now recognize its worth? Can I treasure it? Indeed, can I even accept it? That's not so strange a question as it might seem. Because again, it would be easier for those I know and love and those I trust. But can I receive from the other? Those who are different to me? Those I don't agree with? those I'm not sure I can trust. Surely one of the most significant parts of the parable of the Good Samaritan lies in the wounded traveler accepting help, care, and provision from one of the Samaritans who were so despised. Very definitely the other, the different, the I don't agree with them the I never trusted them. Giving and receiving peace requires generosity of spirit, openness and trust, as well as the humility to accept. It's a precious thing then. Lord grants us grace to put peace into each other's hands and like a treasure hold it. Amen. And we'll just have some silent reflection before we move on. So let's just be still for a moment. As we reflect on the words of Fred Kahn's hymn. for sharing that with us and I'll get Sue to photocopy it for us so that if you want to take that home and read it um, you can do after the service so uh, my microphone's not playing now either so here we go no I'll just talk loudly we'll get there so I want to invite Matt to come up and share with us our reading thank you going to have to be loud. I am on oh, you are loud, yeah. Go for it. Stand by the microphone just in case no. it does work. No, that's, I'll do it without. Okay, no, stand, stand there. It might pick you up, so go for it. <laughs> yeah, because this one's for the internet as well. So. <laughs> the first reading this morning is in the New Testament, and it's John 3. 14 to 21. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That. Sorry, that was me. That was me. Right, you need to go for here because this right. microphone needs okay. you. <laughs> The reading this morning is taken from John 3, verses 14 to 21. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, and God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. 
Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is a judgment that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is in Psalm 46, 10 to 11. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Thank you, Mark. I thought you were doing acrobatics then coming down. Brilliant. <laughs> And as we come together, we just, it, it's amusing that the microphones are not playing today when we're thinking of stillness and silence. Uh, it's as though they know. So to, we're just going to sing together that hymn we've sung the last couple of weeks, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. But I invite you to remain seated as we sing it as a piece of reflection. So let's just remain seated as we sing together, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord. Amen. Be still, we sung repeatedly in that hymn. But what does being still mean? Have you ever experienced that real deep stillness and silence that goes through to the soul? 
I can think back to a couple of occasions, and they're memorable because they were so poignant. Do you remember the Icelandic ash cloud issue? Uh, it's going back about 14, 15 years now, where all the flights were grounded and nobody could go anywhere. We lived in Purbright at the time, and I remember being out in our back garden there and there being total and utter silence. No noise from the cars, no birds singing, no planes in the sky, just total silence. And I remember that being replicated again just a few years ago in 2010 during one of the lockdowns. There was only a moment, a fleeting moment, sitting in the back garden again where there was not <coughs> another sound at all. It was just absolute stillness and silence. Because even when we think we're sitting in silence, there's sounds, isn't there? There's always something. Something we had to do every year in the army was have a hearing test. And that was particularly the case when you came back from operational tours. And uh, I remember going for a hearing test one year, and they put you in this soundproof booth. Okay? And it really is totally soundproof. You can't hear anything outside. And there was one test I remember sitting there thinking, I've gone totally deaf. Because I couldn't hear anything. Five minutes later, the nurse turned up and went, I'm so sorry, Padre, I forgot to turn it on. <laughs> I was so grateful. But five minutes of peace and quiet. But on another occasion, I had it on, and this noise goes, bing, 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 at different um, tones. And you have to press the button. The wise amongst us got used to that you just pressed it every few seconds, because it, it, it always did it in a certain pattern. It's terrible, terrible to cheat. Um, but you'd sit there. And I failed it one year. I was devastated. I was shocked. So they decided it must have been the booth. So they put me in another one. Failed that one as well. So I had to go to a hearing specialist, an audiologist, to see what was going on. And the issue wasn't that I couldn't hear the sounds. It's the fact I heard too many. Because I, when I put the headphones on, I could hear my heart beating. I could hear the blood rushing through my head. So it was just too noisy in the body functions to get that silence that was needed. Getting silence, getting stillness is so difficult. But how do you feel about moments of stillness and silence? Have you attempted to get those moments in your life where you can just sit and be and ponder where there's nothing you have to do. You don't have to read a book. You don't need to look at your phone. You don't need to do anything. You just can sit and be. And you're all thinking now, wouldn't that be wonderful? Because it's absolutely impossible, isn't it? It feels impossible. Because even when you sit down with a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, when you sit in the garden, when you sit with a book in your favourite chair, there's something going round in your mind. It's just the way that happens. There may be worldly silence, but there's not inner silence, because your brain just keeps going. And that moment where the, the world is quiet, your brain takes over, and it's so frustrating. But we need to search, I truly believe, for moments of stillness and silence. As that second reading said, be still and know that I'm God. Moments in a world that's so busy. The world is absolutely chaotic out there, isn't it? It's always busy. Just walking here this morning, there wasn't a moment that went by as my feet went one in front of the other that there was peace. There was constant traffic noise, or planes, or people talking. It was just amazing. Some mornings you just hear the birds, which is wonderful. But today, there was so much, and the noise of the world can be so, so overwhelming. Silence is a prerequisite for inner stillness. And only inner stillness can enable us to truly listen to God, to hear his voice, and to commune with him in the depths of our being. Yet stillness and silence itself are like prayer. Gifts that God wants to bestow upon us gifts that we need to use and to seek. 
Traditionally, Mothering Sunday was one of those days where a silence would flow over big houses. It was the day that traditionally those in service would go back to their mother church, to the place where they'd grown up to see their parents and to go to the services, to see what was going on. And I imagine the big houses in those days would be slightly silent, but probably also slightly chaotic, as those that lived there tried to work out how everything worked without those in service. It must have been quite amusing to watch, but it would have been a new silence. There'd have been a silence in the churches as people came together to worship God, to share in communion to return to worship where they grew up. It was a time for family, a time to celebrate, a time to enjoy. Mothering Sunday has become so much more than that now because of the commercialism of the world. It's changed and it's become, well, I think they started advertising Mothering Sunday, oh, just after Valentine's Day because the gifts are the same shape. So it kind of worked. But it's become so commercial, hasn't it? And it becomes so painful for some because of what it involves and the impact it can have on people. And that's something we have to remember as we remember Mothering Sunday today. But it's also a time of peace, a time of stillness and a time of reflection as many families get together and share time together. But I wonder outside this day, outside this time, how we can create space and silence and stillness. Where can we get that in our lives? We've spoke about resting in God over the last few weeks, but silence and stillness is that next step. It's that next step in our whole beings about how we find that inner peace, that inner stillness to reflect and to come closer to God. And it's something I want to encourage you to consider trying to do this week. I know it's fairly impossible in this area that we live to get that total silence these days because of the noise of the world around. But just give it a shot. Some people I know have noise cancelling earphones, headphones, and that really does work. Well, I'm assuming that's what Eve has on when she ignores me and I'm talking to her and she's got her headphones on. It might just be being a teenager. Um, I'm getting looks now. But sometimes there's ways of cancelling the noise out, out there just to concentrate on the world. And there's something special. As I was sat in the hearing, a, the hearing test booths in the army, listening to my heart beating and the blood whooshing around my body. One, it helped me know I was still alive. But two, it made me realise that even in the depths and the deepest parts of silence, there's noise. Our bodies make noise naturally to work. I'm not talking about the noises that everyone else hears. You know, the groans as you stand up or sit down. I'm talking about that inner noise that just keeps going because our body needs to keep functioning. So I wonder how we can find stillness and silence this week. I don't know. But what I'm going to do is encourage us now just to be silent and to be still and just have a bit of time in our own thoughts and our own bodies to listen to what God might be saying. And I encourage you, if you have time this week, to use this technique as well, just to be still and to reflect on the world around. So just sit comfortably. Make sure that your your feet are on the ground and your legs are uncrossed because when you cross your legs, you're thinking about the pressure. But just sit comfortably and just breathe. Listen to yourself breathing. As you breathe in and as you breathe out. Listen to the noise of your body functioning as you breathe in and as you breathe out. Just breathe naturally. For a few moments, just concentrate on the rhythm of your breath. A 
And as you breathe in and out, just acknowledge in your mind the noises of the world around. It might be the noise of those around you breathing. It might be the cars in the street or the natural sounds of the building. Just acknowledge them as you breathe. I'd imagine that as you breathe and concentrate on your breathing, thoughts are coming to, into your mind. Rather than fighting against them, just acknowledge them and offer them to God. Allow the stillness Allow the silence just to flow through your body. Just feel the stresses and the strains of the world fall off your shoulders. And allow the peace of God to enfold your whole being. as you breathe and as you're still we're just going to listen to the words from my owner of be still and know that I am God God is there, that God has surrounded us, and that God's peace is within our hearts. So this week, be still and know that God is with you, and seek his stillness and silence in all that you do. Amen. And so we're going to sing together again. Peace, perfect peace, is the gift of Christ our Lord. And I'll invite you to remain seated again, because we've been still. Please just don't snore if you get to that stage. But uh, peace, perfect peace.
Let us pray. Can you all hear me all right? Or, yes? Yep. All right, that's good. Let us pray. Loving God, we come today all on different parts of our journey. Some are searching, some are feeling lost, some are hurting, some are feeling loved. Wherever we are and whatever we feel, we come to you as our parent who understands and knows and walks with us. As we journey with you, we hear sounds of joy as families meet and celebrate together. Children tell mothers how wonderful they are, and mothers tell children how loved they are. We also hear sounds of mourning. We pray for those whom today is a reminder of loss, a reminder that mum is not with them anymore. We pray for peace, we pray for comfort. We pray that you might pick them up and carry them today. As we journey with you, we taste the sweetness of new life. We thank you for children, the way they smile, they, the way they brighten our lives. Help us to welcome children into our family and church, loving them unconditionally as you love them. We also taste the bitterness of those for whom today is a sorrowful and painful reminder of their childlessness. We pray for those who have desperately wanted to be parents, have not been able to be. We pray that you might bring sweetness into their lives through the blessings of others. We pray for comfort. We pray that you might pick them up and carry them today. As we journey with you, we see the beauty in family life. We see how you have blessed and cared for us. We remember where you have led us and look forward to where is next. Help us trust you as the future unravels before our eyes. We pray for the family of our church. We ask that you will guide us in the way ahead, inspire us. We also remember those for whom the future is not what they expected to see. We pray for those who've lost a child, who are looking forward with joy only to have dreams shattered. We pray for peace and comfort. We pray that you might pick them up and carry them today. As we journey with you, we remember the smells of home, the smell of freshly baked cake, a delicious meal, and the familiar things. We thank you for what you have provided. We also remember that not everyone has enough, that not everyone can experience the smells of home. We pray for those children who have no home, who have nobody they can call mum or dad. We pray for those who do not have enough money for food. We pray that you will provide. And remember before you all the children in war-torn countries. We are horrified by the pictures we see, and we ask that aid will get through to those in need, especially in Gaza, but also elsewhere. We ask that you will pick up all those in need and carry them today. As we journey today, we reach our hands to you. We know that where we put our hand in your hand, we can rely on your guidance, your love, your arms that carry us when life is hard. We also remember those we love who have not reached out their hands to you or have let go. Our children who do not know you, parents, partners, siblings, and the people we care about. We pray that they may reach out, take your hand, and choose to follow you. We bring our prayers to you, Father, who we know is able to do far more than we can ask for or imagine. And we thank you so much that we know you are listening and will act, even if not in the ways we expect. Be with us on our journeys today. Amen. Thank you, Mary, for sharing 
your prayers with us. And I'm expecting some helpers to come up, and I can see them arriving, so that's really good. I did see the reflection in the door, so, which is brilliant. So we got some help because we've got some flowers today to give out. So, hi guys, are you going to come and help us give out some flowers? Yeah. yeah. The reason I've brought them up to help me is because I'm lazy and I can't run around everyone. It's a simple one. But before we do that, we're going to say some prayers. So shall we just come and grab a seat and we'll say a prayer first. I'm going to move these here so I don't fall over them because that would be really embarrassing. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time I've fallen over things in church. So do you want to grab, let's pass a bucket of flowers down to people. There you go. There's one for you. There we go. Give them the, the big ones. There you go. Do you want to grab that one? So let's just pray. So it's been tradition on Mothering Sunday that we give out flowers to ladies within the congregation. So if you're a lady, feel free to take a bunch of flowers. It's up to you if you decide you're a lady or not, but hey. Um, (laughs) Okay. And they were donated to us. We had a request many years ago um, for the flowers. And Mary Cooper's going to remind me of the name because I've left my piece of paper over there. Sorry? From Gladys Dale. Um, to buy flowers specifically for Mothering Sunday. And it's absolutely wonderful that we've been able to do this for years. And it's our gift to you to enjoy on this wonderful day. And what's lovely is the daffodils, I don't know, there's something special about daffodils, isn't there? And they just remind us of what is coming, the spring that's coming, the hope that comes. So as you receive these daffodils, receive them with love, knowing that they've come from the whole of High Cross Church. So let's pray. Lord, we ask your blessing upon these flowers here, flowers that are given to bring joy and happiness to people. We pray for all this Mothering Sunday, whatever it means. And as Mary prayed, we pray for those who find it difficult and those who find it a joy. But we ask your blessing upon all those who receive these flowers now. May they enjoy them and may they smile each time they see them. Amen. So rather than you watching the children run around, I invite you to stand and we're going to sing our final hymn, which is Love Divine or Love's Excelling, as the children help me give out the flowers. So let's stand and sing together. Let me take that.
So as we leave, I remind you there are refreshments downstairs and there's a retiring collection uh, for the work of High Cross here and in the community. Sue and Eve will be by the doors and give out a copy of that wonderful um, prayer that uh, Viv read out, but sadly the microphones gave up. So do take a copy with you to, to read at home and to just reflect upon, because it's really powerful. And if you've not had a bunch of daffodils, please come and grab one on your way out. Hopefully they've managed to find everyone. So let's pray. Loving God, we humans are afraid of the darkness, but from you, darkness and light are alike, and no problem, you can see in the dark, and we can put our hand in yours again and trust you, knowing that your light will come and dawn in the world. So we pray this day that your silence and stillness will enfold us, that the darkness will become light, and that your blessings will surround us. So may the blessing of God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with each one of us and remain with us this day and always. Amen. Now our service has ended. No, now our worship has ended. May our worship service begin. Ah, oh, let's just be still and reflect on today's service. <laughs>